Lighting the home in John Bunyan's time. If you visit the John Bunyan Museum, especially if you're part of a group, you'll be able to see a number of objects that are used to show what life was like for ordinary people like John and Elizabeth Bunyan and their family in the 17th century. One of the things that people always needed was a way of lighting their homes at night time, especially during the long winter months. People's lives changed with the seasons much more then than they do now. In the summer, there were long hours of daylight, but as the nights lengthened, life became more difficult and any source of light was very precious. In the 21st century, we live in a world full of light, available at the flick of a switch or even remotely or by voice command. This would have been unimaginable for most of human history. When winter came, people like us in Bedford and in northern latitudes all around the world would have lived with the darkness or with one or two lights where they had them. Rich households and institutions like churches had candles made of beeswax, which burnt brightly and steadily. But these were far beyond the means of most ordinary people. And even in the wealthiest households, the servants would have had to make do with something much cheaper and smellier. They would have used tallow, which is the rendered fat of animals. Tallow candles have been around for more than 2,500 years. Both the Greeks and the Romans used them, and they're found in many other parts of the world. They're made by dipping a wick made of rush or flax or something else that burns in animal fat, usually several times so that the fat builds up into a column and the wick burns slowly, giving off a steady light. Candles would be placed in a candle holder. Again, in rich houses, these would be elaborate candelabra. But for more day-to-day -day use or in ordinary households, you would use a candlestick that you could put on a table or carry round with you to light your way. Slightly better off people would use pewter and poorer families would have to make do with pottery or earthenware. But this doesn't look like any kind of candle holder at all. This is a rush light holder, the cheapest form of lighting and is a genuine 17th century artifact held in the museum. Rush lights would be made by the children of the family as part of their day-to-day -day household tasks. They would gather rushes by the rivers or water sources and strip off most of the hard outer skin to leave only the pith in the middle. This would be dipped in tallow and the rush light would be held in the pincers at the top of the holder. If the lighted end was upwards, it would burn slowly but dimly. You could tip it downwards to give a stronger light, but that would use up the tallow faster. Of course, if you wanted a lot of light, you could light the other end as well and burn the candle at both ends, in which case your tallow wouldn't last very long at all. All candles made with animal fat were smoky and smelly, but they were also edible. They would attract rats and mice who would regard them as a tasty meal. This is why the tallow candles were kept in a box with a lid hung on the wall of the house. Rats and mice could not reach them and the precious source of light would stay safe. This box with its lid again is a genuine artifact held in our museum and one like it along with the rush light holder might well have been used by John Bunyan and his family. We know that he used tallow candles because he writes about them in his poetry. His meditations upon a candle describe exactly the experience we've been talking about. The candle in the night doth all excel, nor sun, nor moon, nor stars then shine so well. So is the Christian in our hemisphere, whose light shows others how their course to steer. And as the candle burns down, but let us draw towards the candle's end. The fire, you see, doth wick and tallow spend, as grace man's life until his glass is run. And so the candle and the man is done. The man now lays him down upon his bed. The wick yields up its fire and so is dead. 
the candle now extinct is, but the man by grace mounts up to glory, there to stand. <laughs>